You are now tuned in to Check This Out News. We connect the streets. I would say the dark secret. Now, the pressure is on ride-hailing apps Uber and Lyft to publicly release the number of assaults that have occurred on rides facilitated by the two apps. Over the past three months, there have been 92 reports of sexual assaults and rape by Uber and Lyft drivers in three months of summer in 2017, based on news stories alone. Now, neither Uber nor Lyft have responded to requests for comments. The latest target of the Me Too campaign can likely be found on your smartphone. Actress Pamela Anderson is at the forefront calling out ride-hailing apps like Uber and Lyft to strengthen background checks on drivers. Like other females concerned about safety, it's been felt that these apps do not conduct adequate quick background checks on his drivers. Now joining us today on Tech This Out, we have the CEO of Drive Her, a female only ride sharing app that hopefully will deter sexual assault. Enter Aisha Adu. <laughs> Aisha, thank you for being so patient and welcome. No thank you. That's a much needed uh, service that you're providing. So let's just jump right into it, huh? Sounds good. All right, so can you give our audience more of a perspective on why there's a need to have a new type of ride-hailing app that can cater to females? Um, most definitely. Um, I think one of the main reasons, for sure, is around safety. Um, and throughout the transportation industry, it is a very male-dominated industry. And most times, women actually tend to be one of the biggest consumers when it comes to transportation. However, the care and actually creating the space for them to be able to feel safe, but then to also have a space that caters to them has never been um, part of the conversation. So Drive Her actually creates that space for women to feel safe, to feel empowered, but then also an, an opportunity to make extra income. So that's part of the reason why I feel like Drive Her is so important, um, not just on the tech side, but then really and truly also on the economic empowerment aspect. Secure your bag. Now, why do you think sexual assault and other crimes have gone almost unnoticed? Mm -hmm. Or, in other words, we're hearing very little on such an important topic. Um, I think, you know, there is a level of shame that's associated to women reporting incidents that occur to them. Um, specifically in Canada, over the past couple of years, people have become a bit more vocal in speaking up against um, issues of assault or harassment, even when, you know, in transportation or on a regular day. Um, and I think you know, movements like the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement really has created a space for people to be able to speak freely about these things, especially women, because over the past couple of years has been something where when a woman speaks up about, um, you know, their assault or something that you've experienced, there's always a level of, oh, okay, well, what were you wearing? Were you drinking too much? Or all of these other questions. So I think there has been, you know, a, a, a big amount of shame that has been associated with that. So it sort of causes people to hold back on, you know, sharing the experiences. But I do think that the time is up where women are becoming more vocal and are becoming more forthright um, in sharing the experiences, but then also ensuring that they receive the justice that they deserve. Absolutely. Now, tell me, what is Drive Her and what separates your service from others that tend to be springing up on a regional level? Yeah, most definitely. So Drive Her is a ride sharing platform that is designed specifically with women in mind. Safety is at the core of everything that we do um, in ensuring that, yes, not only the women are safe, but the drivers are safe as well. One of the things that separates us from the rest of, you know, the ride sharing platforms that are out there is that this is specifically created with women in mind. It was created by a woman for women. Um, and it's also really understanding that there is a demand for women to feel safe and there is a social responsibility um, for us to create services that caters to the safety of women. And I think that's one of the reasons why we exist. Um, there are other technical aspects, of course, that um, causes us to stand out. But then one of our core and main things is creating that safe platform, creating that safer alternative for women out there. 
do we wish that all women would use the service? Absolutely. But then would all women use the service? Maybe not, right? But then it's really letting women know that there is this alternative out there and, you know, it was created with them in mind. What are some of the obstacles that you faced and how have you remained persistent with your goal? Oh man, the obstacles. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> it's been it's been quite it's been quite a journey. Um, in terms of like even putting together the idea, bringing the idea out, and actually bringing it to market has been uh, it's been about eighteen months. Um, and then also from there, like actually acquiring the license um, specifically in Toronto and um, also getting you know insurance coverage and all of that stuff has been quite a hurdle. I think. Another issue that we recently faced, um, faced actually is, you know, a potential breach um, whereby someone hacked into our system, oh um, you know, to collect people's data. And that's something that, you know, we've been very vocal and we've been very forthright with. Um, we've informed all of our customers um, and our drivers as well to, you know, notify them of this potential breach. Um, and it's been really interesting just looking at the landscape of, you know, Toronto, but then having women reach out to us from all around the world, um, typically just asking, when is the service coming to my city? Or, you know, sharing their personal experiences and personal stories. So despite the hurdles that we constantly face on a daily basis, um, on a technical level, on a social level, and even sometimes on sort of like a municipal or a provincial level, we're still able to really push throughout the different obstacles that have been th- being thrown at us left, right, center. Um, it's really our customers um, that have been, you know, our inspiration and like our force in terms of like remi- sometimes reminding us why the service is needed and, you know, sharing their personal stories and experiences. And because of that, we're able to move forward. Personally, throughout this journey, um, there's been several times that I've wanted to give up, that I've wanted to say, you know what, this is becoming too much, you know, the attacks are too much or um, the pushbacks are too much, but really like, in those moments, you'd have someone call or someone email you and say, hey, um, I want to use the service. This is the reason why. And you'll share a personal experience. And you realize that, you know, this is something that is bigger than myself. And this is something that is, is, is it's, it's bigger than, you know, just providing a service for women. But it's really and truly changing the face of transportation Believe it. Um, and how we know it um, for women and, you know, by women. We want to remind you to please like our Facebook page if you haven't already. When you join, you'll be able to receive weekly updated news and events, live video messages, and most importantly, you'll be able to interact with tons of people just like you. So go on that button on top of your Facebook page and give it a click, or interact with us on Instagram. Without each and every one of you, Tech This Out would not exist. We couldn't do it without you. Make sure to repost and share different things you see on our page. The more you share, the better. Be sure to watch previous shows on our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you can be notified when we post new content. We really want to connect and hear from you. So please don't hesitate to message us. And to find us online, please go to Tech This Out America on Facebook. Tech This Out on YouTube, Twitter and all social media platforms. Get whole scope at techthisoutnews.com. We connect the streets. Now, tell us about your background and how difficult it was to get your business off the ground as a sister competing in a male-dominated space. Oh, most definitely. Um, I think one, one for me personally, I am not um, a tech, uh, technology expert at all. Uh, my background is actually in business administration accounting. Um, I did not practice accounting. I studied accounting, but um, one of my passions over the years has been in, you know, the empowerment sector, specifically for girls and women. Um, I've been running a nonprofit organization, Power to Girls, for the past seven years, and I think that was part of my fuel in starting Drive Her. But then one of the things that I realized is that, you know, trying to navigate this tech tech environment or this tech space um, over the past couple of years has been it's been quite interesting because sometimes you know you don't know if people are turning you away because you know you're a young black woman 
or is it turning you away because they feel like you know you do not have enough expertise to be in the sector or is it turning you away because they feel like your target market is too um, narrow or it's too specific so there's like you know a lot of questioning however on the flip side it's it's also been really interesting for me personally seeing how people respond to services that are designed for women um, especially when it's coming from like I said, a young black woman like myself um, and someone that has a very, like I'm, I'm someone that's super connected to home and, you know, I'm very vocal. So it's been it's been a hurdle. It's been quite a journey. But I think one of the things that's easier is having mentors, you know, having having people in specific fields that, you, you know, you can always refer back to, you can always go back to. Major killer. Um, there's been different incubators, different, you know, spaces that I've gotten into that, um, I've, I've, you know, I've presented. I'm like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is how I want to get in here. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you wouldn't even hear anything back. Sometimes you would hear something back and it's like, all right, okay, we need you to come in and pitch. And then you pitch and it's like, no. So I think it's been really um, a very self-learning um, journey and really just trying to stay on top of things and trying my possible best to always make sure that you know your stuff. You know, and I think that's been, for me, one of the biggest learning curves is that understanding that, especially when it comes to the tech space, you do not have all the answers. Things can shift and change, you know, just by the snap of your fingers. And you have to be ready to handle it and you have to be ready and well equipped to, you know, deal with it. So it's been a journey and it's been a learning journey for me personally. It's awesome. When will the service be available in the U.S. or, or even globally? Um, so that is that is most definitely something that we're still, um, you know, thinking about. My for, for us right now, I think it's really going to where the need is. So if people in this U.S. Um, you know give us a shout and said, "Listen, we need you to come to a city." One of the things for us is going to places where there is the need. Um, so if, let's say, women in a particular city reach out and said, hey, listen, we need this in our city, we need this in our country, we'll most definitely go there. Um, and it's also really just taking it one step at a time and one day at a time and ensuring that, you know, we're really going into spaces and going into um, cities that have the absolute need for us. You know, um, we do, of course, want to expand globally at some point, but then it's also really just, being intentional with the places that we introduce our services to next. Absolutely. Um, incredible. Congratulations. Godspeed to you and continued blessings. If people want to get in touch with you, what would they need to do? Uh, most definitely. So they can visit our website at driveher.ca. Um, also on all social media platforms at Driver app. They can also most definitely get in touch with me at Aisha Fua on all social media platforms as well. 